Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. Um, this time, we're going to get a deep dive on the OpenShift uh, logging stack from someone who's been um, doing a lot of work with it, Gabrielle Ferez Stein, who's one of the technical account managers for OpenShift. And I'm going to let him introduce himself and his background and take it away. We'll have live Q&A um, at the end, and um, you can stage your questions in the chat. So, Gabriel, please take it away. Okay. Hi, Diane. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriel Stein, and um, I'm a technical account manager for OpenShift. I have um, a lot of customers which have um, problems with logging stack, well, how it works, and how it co could have a better performance and fix also some problems. So I decided to do a presentation uh, talking about uh, the logging stack and how to, to fix some issues and also introducing to people the logging stack first, firstly. So that's why I'll show you now is just like an introduction, introduction and then after we go for some um, experience which I have with my customers so that you can also um, understand better how the logging stack works and also how to fix some problems and even also um, there is some hints how we can work together if you are a Red Hat customer and would like to to use our support so that you know already how how much data or what data you should uh, send to us on our logging stack so that we can have a much better work together and a faster approach to these problems. So let's start with the basic definitions from the logging stack. What is the logging stack? Uh, first, uh, when we install OpenShift and then you, you do the, the setup, you install the logging stack, um, you have like three components, uh, mainly three components working, which is the elastic search and also the Fluent D and also the Kibana. So you have like the three components which forms this acronym, which is EF key and Elasticsearch, Fluent D and Kibana. So that is the mainly components from the Elasticsearch. And what does like Fluent D? Fluent D just like uh, do the tail from logs from every node which I have running OpenShift. So I will split pods from Fluent D on every node, and these pods will be telling the uh, logs from the, my node. Um, information also some for my namespaces and applications which I'm running on top of OpenShift. These logs are after the the tail from Fluent D sent to Elasticsearch, and so Elasticsearch is an store for these logs. So I will have these logs there and also indexes for these logs. So for an easy approach, an easy uh, use for these logs, so I can view it on Kibana. And Kibana is just mainly the tool which I use to open these logs, which are stored in Elasticsearch. It's like a web UI, which I use for that. And that's what I told you, EF key. So Elasticsearch is the store which I have so for logs. I deliver these this logs for Kibana. I can uh, visualize these this logs on Kibana and also create indexes. And one thing of Elasticsearch which we should uh, pay attention of that is like, it's a Java application. So I will not go like in discussion if Java is good or not, but there concerns a lot of resources, right? So we should have like uh, uh, plenty of RAM and CPU for that. We have we should plan for it that we have enough RAM and not CPU, and also disk with a, a lot of uh, or a lot no, but with good uh, I/O. So you need to have fast disks that you could uh, store these logs and it could be a fast uh, access or it would be better to access and uh, we're using Kibana, right? And firstly, you ask me, hey, Gabriel, um, why, uh, what kind of um, uh, plenty of run I should have, or how much run and how much CPU I should have for these? 
it's hard to come to a customer and say, hey, put that uh, amount of RAM and we work for you or this amount of CPU. This is something that should be planned, uh, should be first uh, checked how many logs you have in your OpenShift cluster, how many amount, this amount of logs, and also you, you should need how many or much run for it. So we have some kind of documentation and in our documentation, we have a kind of formula. And for this formula, you can see um, how much lines of room logs uh, will be stored and how many indexes and everything. But for my experience, I should like put a lot of RAN firstly and CPU associated to this logging stack. So if I see that I need less resources, if the, the logging stack is really running well and I can take these resources back and then you could do it and then it will be much better. And one thing that is happens a lot of time if you are setting Elasticsearch and you don't have a plan how to do it and there is a um, need some resources, right? And then you have problems uh, taking these logs, storing these logs with Elasticsearch and also producing, producing indexes. And if that happens, it will happen that you cannot see these logs on Kibana, right? Because Elasticsearch cannot uh, uh, prepare these logs, so I can check on Kibana what kind of logs I will need. Fluentd is also um, a, a pod which I will have running uh, on my nodes, OpenShift nodes. And the approach for this is that you will have like the these logs send uh, to Elasticsearch and the Elasticsearch will, will create indexes and will manipulate these logs so I can view it and visualize on Kibana. And Kibana is just like poor uh, web UI for Elasticsearch, which I use to check my logs, which are produced on uh, my OpenShift nodes. I have also some deployment considerations. So what we should do before we just deploy the logging stack in our OpenShift cluster. So the most important thing when I'm deploying an OpenShift cluster is, as I already said, is like to plan. I should plan uh, how big is the amount of logs which I will use or uh, how many resources I will need for it. Um, of course, the approach, if you have the splitted clusters, uh, an OpenShift cluster for development and another splitted cluster, cluster for production, you should also check it. Um, you need uh, for development probably much more resources because you have uh, developers developing or doing a lot of tests and CI CD and a lot of deployments on this development cluster and this will produce a lot of logs, right? And in another way, if you are going to the production cluster, you have your applications running there and you have your customers taking these logs or producing these logs uh, using the applications, right? And they also need to check if there's an application which you are deployed on top of OpenShift that produces a lot of logs, right? Um, you need a lot of resources too, right? And as I said to you, there's a basic calculation. I I will show you after um, there's an URL, a solution from Red Hat and a, an article which you can use for um, the troubleshooting from the logging stack and you can have some basic information there for it. And also it's important also that you check the configuration from Fluent T. Um, mainly on the OpenShift, we have some plugins which are already um, deployments with the Fluent D configuration, right? Uh, uh, running with, together with Fluent D. But um, we unfortunately, or fortunately, we don't um, support a new plugins. If you start to using different plugins on, together with the Fluent D pods on top of OpenShift, this will bring, bring some complications to us. So. I will also um, do uh, give an advice that be uh, um, 
take care with with these. Uh, just don't uh, install different plugins on top of Fluent D pods there because you probably have some problems. And then if you reach our support and then we see that there's some plugin which is not, uh, so to say, supported by us, then you have some problems, right? Uh, the second uh, consideration, or another consideration is from Elasticsearch, is like uh, if you would like to have an HA uh, setup, please have three nodes from OpenShift running Elasticsearch ports, so that you have this HA uh, running your cluster. And um, the another thing is then for storage, right? Don't um, take care of how much consumption you have on your storage for this indexes from Elasticsearch, it could bring some complications. So leave it like uh, between 50 and 70% and, and, and no more than these. If you have more than these, you start getting some complications and also you probably will not consume logs. You cannot consume these logs on Kibana. Another considerations are that the Docker, if you are doing the configuration from Docker there, uh, please set the JSON file as log driver. This is something that you, is a standard in the new versions for OpenShift. And the journal D is uh, gave a lot of complications for the cust from the customers in the past. So we advise our customers to use the JSON file instead of journal D so that we can work better with the customer. Uh, the customer. And replicas, if I have replicas from my data from Elasticsearch, and please pay attention, these replicas are different from, from the, the nodes which uh, I have, uh, from the pods which I have from Elasticsearch. I can have many pods from Elasticsearch, but what I'm saying here about the replicas, and the replicas is the data which I will be storing from Elasticsearch. So mainly if you have like one replica, we have uh, uh, two copies from this uh, data from Elasticsearch and for three, you have more copies for that. You have like replica from this data and then will be um, let's say better um, secure and that if you have some problems in, an, in a node from Elasticsearch, you can use another replicas with this data. And another recommendation or consideration is that this configuration, which you can set on the daemon set from, from Fluent D, right, is the, the merge the JSON log, right? This is, is causing a lot of problems in our customer setups because there's a lot of uh, applications and, and running on these clusters from our customers which have different kind of mapping from the data and from the indexes. And Elasticsearch sometimes doesn't understand. And why it doesn't understand this? Because you have some data which are stored on these indexes, which are strings or binary uh, data types. So if you try to store um, a binary or a Int, 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 integer on the string um, data type there, you have some problems. And with the merge JSON log as true, this will uh, bring you uh, problems on the log because you cannot see some part of the logs or part, uh, part of these logs will not appear on the Kibana. So false means that you kind of ignore these uh, mappings from string on Integra and they will not break your logging um, to, to, to appear then on Kibana. About performance, um, I have some types to, to improve performance and first is like, just need uh, to, to, to say it again, right? It's like, please don't use NFS. This is something which is our, on, on, on our documentation. Please is don't use NFS in production. This is the worst uh, error which you can do deployment uh, from a, a loss, logging stack and the data from Elasticsearch on top of NFS. I already said fast disks are a must. Right, you need to have really to have a good I/O, right? And RAM, 
you need to have enough RAM that you could uh, have better pro logging processing from this Elasticsearch. And I will say why it is. And firstly, is that you, if you don't have enough um, RAM and um, the consumption from Elasticsearch is too slow, the logs from FluentD will start on the nodes to to stay there, and then you cannot consume the whole the whole logs from FluentD. So if you have enough run, you can consume these logs from FluentD. You will have no no problems with this output from from logs and consumption from these logs by Elasticsearch. And another component from our logging stack is the curator. The curator is like the from job or which we have on the OpenShift logging project. And the curator, the main um, function for it is like to do the maintenance, which I will have on the my logging stack. Firstly, it's like, I will delete the indexes in uh, a couple of days. I can set up it like 10 or 11 or 30 days, right? And he will delete the indexes in these days. We will like, is we will work like uh, really an, a cron job, like a cron job, and the cron recommendation which I, uh, I, I was I spoke with our team is like to have seven days. You, if you would like to have more than seven days, will be complicated because then you have much more indexes and this this will affect performance and also can even break your setup. Like with customers already had with set up for 60 days or 45, 45 days and this break up, complete the setup. So keep it in just seven days. If you would like to have it for more days, more than seven days and have better performance or a better approach. So I will recommend that you probably need to go for another product like as Splunk or another logging product. But for us, for the, our logging stack, it's not recommended to go for more than this. And also, I said to you that uh, about the, the replicas, so you have the copy from data from Elasticsearch in uh, a couple of Elasticsearch nodes, right? And um, the shards, which you, the indexes are split um, through the nodes which are running Elasticsearch, and this uh, splitting is like doing by shards, right? The thing is, if you have a lot of shards and more than than usual, this will affect performance. So use this um, shards configuration with uh, caution, like don't just split the, the shards for a lot of lo uh, nodes or do a lot of shards for it because it could affect performance and even break your, your setup, your logging stack setup. So um, I have customers that are just using the normal configuration from shards and also taking care of this deletion from, from, from the indexes and this, this works really, really well. But if you have a really big setup, so you need to, to do it, but do it with caution, right? Always, if you have support from our product from Red Hat, so contact your support uh, team or a TEM or technical account manager and ask him for this. And then we have some um, common errors which you have in our log mistakes. So this is uh, what happens with a lot of customers. Uh, first is like, uh, the FluentD uh, doesn't work anymore or doesn't send the logs to Elasticsearch. And also mainly the customers perceive this error when they cannot see the logging on Kibana. So this is a problem with unfortunately resources. You need to check if you have enough resources for it, right? And um, another error is also uh, that the uh, FluentD cannot send uh, quickly the logs to Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch cannot consume it as, as wished. And um, one tip or uh, one uh, hint which I give to my customers is like, uh, if you, um, I will speak about more about the logging dump, right? But um, if you, someone asks for you to do the logging dump and 
This is the to take all the information from the login stack running and put in some files and put in some description files. And if you are producing this login dump and you have some errors like exit code 60 or 28 or some exit code, this could be that you are having problems with resources that even the login dump, even the catching from whole information which you have in your login stack, you have some problems. You don't have enough resources to, to run this login dump. And the, um, you have like this URL, which I put here, and I don't know, probably Diane will share this presentation with you. This is uh, the main uh, article which we have on Red Hat uh, with a lot of troubleshooting hints, what we should use to troubleshoot OpenShift uh, login stack. So also there is some link, the link for the login dump, how we can take, use this script for the login dump. And also, uh, how we can debug Kibana, Elasticsearch, and FlintD. There's different topics on this art article, and I think it's really important that to to use that. So um, now I was just speaking about OpenFish three, or at least the the login stack mainly um, from OpenShift three. And I was talking with the colleagues about the OpenShift 4 and what we should expect from the OpenShift 4 and the logging stack. Um, mainly, uh, on if we compare the setup from the logging uh, stack on OpenShift 3, uh, 3x and 4x, when you are deploying things on the OpenShift uh, 3, you are using uh, Ansible for it. We are using Ansible scripts. Right, and on OpenShift 4, we are uh, doing the deployment from, from the logging stack using an operator. We have a cluster logging operator, so we can go to the web uh, interface from the, our OpenShift there and just do the, the go to the operator hub, a search for clustering, cluster logging, and do the deployment for our operator for clustering logging, and then you have the the Kibana and Fluent D and everything what you need. And I will probably in the end of presentation show you uh, this in OpenShift 4 web interface. Let's see. So um, one thing so one thing which will come um, on, on the next versions from OpenShift of the logging stack will be like the logging forward, and that means that you will you can forward the the logs which you are having on FluentD to another uh, sources. Like you can um, export for Splunk, uh, Gray Log, or Kafka, and um, you don't, will not need the whole infrastructure from, from the logging stack, right? And you also can use TLS between the collector, which is collecting the logs, is, which is the Fluent D, right? And the destination, which you will forward the logs. Now in the OpenShift uh, um, uh, 4.3 uh, is tech preview. You can now start using it and check it. And this will be GA or uh, generally uh, general availability for version 4.5. And uh, for it, you can also and um, for the logging forwards, you can also um, you can have the um, uh, audit logs. You can uh, forward these audit logs from the systems to another external systems. And then you can check, like in the example here, like the how how is the access for the cluster, and then you have these audit logs also in the external tool. You can also send to any CM uh, system. And uh, also will be an upgrade uh, upgraded version from the Elasticsearch and Kibana. So we have the version six for from both, right? We we'll move from the search board to open distro, yeah. And the new data model will also improve not just the scalability but also performance, right? 
and we will have a better separation between the, the, the operator from the, the logging, the cluster logging, and also Elasticsearch and the, the product also from Elastic that is Kibana. This is planned for version 4.5. So, um, the logging dump, this is for both OpenShift, for OpenShift 3X and 4X. When you have problems on the logging stack, uh, you have different ways so that you can debug the problem or troubleshoot the problem. One could be like you can access the logging uh, project there and with the OC, OC command line, right? and check what pods are running and check the logs or check the description for the describe from the from the pods and uh, from the components from the project or you can do a logging dump a logging dump is just a script that you run in our openshift cluster and this script you just like catch the information from the openshift logging project namespace and we'll Create a, a, a directory with the with this whole information so that you could use it for debugging the the logging stack. What is happening uh, if you have enough resources or if you have problems uh, with indexes and and so on, right? And if you are working actively with the support from Red Hat, you can also send it to, for for the support from Red Hat. Hey, I have a logging dump here. Is a, a a uh, file which I compact and put in a small file with the all information for my logging stack. I would like to, to have some help on this. That's that we can do. So mainly the operation for this is like you um, catch the script is is this uh, in uh, JavaScript, right? And then you run this script uh, with as an admin a cluster admin because you need to catch this information. And then you have like a directory with the information. And I will show you also a little bit about the logging dump in the next. Uh... So the logging dump when I create this. Uh, uh, Logging dump from my from my system from my logging stack. I will have different uh, directories, and every directory has a kind of function. The first uh, level, which I can say is like, if is a directory for every component from the logging stack, which is the Curata and Fluentd, the Elasticsearch and Kibana. So I will have like. Inside of these directories, uh, we have like uh, the information from the pods running this uh, Fluentd or Elasticsearch and Kibana and so on. And also we have logs, right? And the last directory, which is project, uh, is uh, really uh, I scrapped from the whole project from the OpenShift log uh, logging project. So. I will have there inside the demo sets, the deployment configs, the, the pods configuration, the, and, and, and so on. I will have the whole components for my project there in, in files so I can read it and I can see how the deployment from this logging stack was made, right? So, um, to going something to do something practical, I have here uh an example um from the logging dump i created here a logging dump file which i downloaded and it's just a shell script which goes through the logging stack and save the details and the logs from the my logging stack in different directories so if I run this script, I will go, I will have a kind of directory like this. And go into the directory, as I said to you, I have these directories, which is Curator, Elasticsearch, Fluentd, Kibana, and Project. So go into the Curator, I will have mainly um 
the description from the pod running the curator. If you remember, the curator is just a cron job which runs from time to time. And here I have just like some errors that is didn't run uh, well or have some problems, right? This is an error which I'm having here on my login stack. And if I go to the logs directory, so I have some logs. The files are already uh, compact, compact, and I can use less, for example. And I will have like the uh, content from this file. You can see what is happening with my router. And same approach is if I'm going to the Elasticsearch directory. And for example, here we already see that is uh, nothing there. So um, why is nothing there? I will show you. Easy. Um, I have already an error on my cluster here running, for example. So if we already have a customer sent to us this logs, this logging dump, and I see that the directory from Elasticsearch is already empty, is really something that is not okay. So I will ask for the customer the first thing like to to show me if the logging, um, the Elasticsearch pods are running or not. So we need to also then investigate why these um, Elasticsearch uh, pods are not running. And then they can use a lot of tools like go into the logs or do a describe on the pod. And then they can see what is going on. So another directory which I have is like if I go the main directory here I have the Fluent D. So I have my Fluent D pods, they are running there. Um, I will have here files for every node running the Fluent D pods. So that means that they have here um, six, um, um, four, uh, seven. Um, nodes running a uh, front D, sorry. So I open a file here and I will have the details from, from my Fluent D port. Like uh, this is exactly if I run uh, OC describe port on top of this OpenShift Fluent D port. So and we see also that here is the merge JSON log as true. That's something which is we probably should change if you are having some complications with the logging from Fluent D and send to Elasticsearch. And if Elasticsearch cannot understand it, um, going to the log directory, logs directory, I have the logs from Fluent D, so can also just this or just uh, open this file and I can see what is going on. The first file which I opened was the um, logs from the Fluent D and the communication with Elasticsearch is send logs to uh, Elasticsearch. And here is like the, the log from the pod uh, which is the Fluent D pod running on the node. So I have some, some errors, I have some problems here, or just some warnings, which I should check what is going on, right? And uh, if we, we saw an, minutes ago, my Elasticsearch pod is not running, so he is, cannot send the logs to Elasticsearch. And also, I, if I do a check here, I 
I have probably also some stack file here, a stale file, uh, which cannot be sent to my Elasticsearch. And also, it's important to mention that um, inside of logs, I will also have logs for every um, pod running on my nodes from OpenShift, right? So I can go into all the these logging files from the front pods and check what is going on. And going to Kibana is also the same. So I will have the description from the pod running Kibana. So is this is the data which I have on my Kibana pod running. And in the logs also I have I will have the logs on my Kibana port running there. Yeah. So it's also complaining that Elasticsearch uh, is not running. I have here some, in my cluster, I have some problems with the storage. Is The storage is not mounting. So that's why it's happened this error. And if I go to the project, I will see like my config maps, daemon sets, deployment configs, and uh, persistent volumes and routes and services and so on. So even my secrets, I can check it out. So I have the information from my nodes here running uh, the logging stack. So one thing also I, which I can see here doing this is also if uh, a node from OpenShift is overcommitted, if I have a lot of um, the limits really is really high, so my uh, node cannot uh, attend the whole demand which I have on my login stack. And also I can see also the events from the project empty and also I said to you that you can change the merge JSON log uh, configuration to false and he is on demo set so you go for fluent D logging fluent D I can see this configuration here or true so I will probably, in this case, go to my customer and say, hey, please change the demo set and set it for false. Of course, I need to do it on on the cluster from the, my customer. So I just see that it's wrong and they can advise him. So it's better to do and how you can fix this problem. So this is the mainly the login dump which we have. This is really um, helpful, it will help a lot you to check what is going on with the logging stack. And I recommend to you also to check this link to the troubleshooting um, the OpenShift logging stack and how to produce the logging dump. So you can start navigating into it and also check what is going on. And of course, we have all support that which can help you on this demand. So I would like to Thank you um, for uh, being here to watch this presentation. I have a lot of, um, I present a lot, presented a lot of things. There's much more which I can do in a presentation about the logging stack. I hope that you enjoy it. And if you have some questions, please put in the questions. I will check now the questions. Let's see. Yes, there are a number of questions, so and I think they're all good ones. So the most recent one, um, Novell is asking about forwarding logs to Splunk, um, and they want to have the same indexing in Splunk, i.e. namespace indexing, but he's not seeing anything um, is one, uh, written up about it, and he's wondering if, there's any, if this is possible, and if you know. 
Uh, let's see. Okay. Indexing is Splunk. Good question. <laughs> I, to be honest, I didn't, uh, I didn't um, use it as Splunk uh, with the logging forward until now. I don't have a, a customer doing that uh, until now. So uh, we probably need to check the documentation and, uh, and, and find a way to do it. Probably it's, it's possible, right? And if not, we can do also kind of request for enhancement and try to, to fix it in the next versions from the, the OpenShift logging stack. And then there's another one from Amadeo. Um, yeah, I've been checking it. Yeah. What new elastic features such as index lifecycle management, um, are they available? Is it possible to use that in OpenShift without using Curator? Oh, the first uh, version, uh, the first thing is like about the logging stack is like we are using not the most updated version from the Elasticsearch. So we are using the version six. And as I remember the Elasticsearch now, the last version is the version seven. Let me check. So we are not like with the resources uh, or we are not the same version from Elasticsearch, which you can just use it without the OpenShift logging stack. And I don't, I never, I never see someone doing it without Curato. I think Curato now is the way to do it. We we probably could check it in, in the next versions. I think that was, there was a couple other questions here, Clove's asking um, what you would recommend for any further reading documentation or books on this topic. Um, first, uh, if you are using um, the, the OpenShift, uh, if you have also access to docu uh, documentation from OpenShift or even OKD, right? Um, read the docs from, from OKD. Uh, what we offer there is the first point of start. And also the documentation from Elastic is really good. You have a really good documentation there, but it's something that you need to, to, to take care, to pay attention. That is that the Elastic search, which you find on the website from Elastic, is the, some versions ahead from our version used in OpenShift. So you probably try to, 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 to implement something which is on this documentation from Elastic website, and it's not compatible with our version because we are a little bit uh, uh, back on this version's management from Elastic Search list. And also uh, the documentation from FluentD are really good. So I will also go for the website from FluentD and let me check it out. Yeah, they have also really good documentation there, which is docs.fluentd.org. Uh, uh, so you have also some good documentation to start. And I'll, um, Gabrielle and I will um, collect some of those links and put them in a blog post on openshift.com along with his presentation and the video for this. So um, these are all great questions and um, you know we look forward to, to having more uh, talks on this topic, obviously. And perhaps we can get the Elastic folks to come on and um, give a talk about what, you know, what's going on um, in, in their latest versions and what we can anticipate in the of future. Course. Yeah, I think that, that would be a good follow on to this as well. So thank you very much. I thank you, Gabrielle, for your time and um, for taking the time to walk through all of this. I will try and get all of this up um, in the next day or so. Um, so look for it probably on Monday on the openshift.com blog. Um, and it'll probably be on the YouTube channel, RH OpenShift, um, sooner than that. It takes a little while to get the blog published. So thank you again, Gabrielle, and um, thank you You're all welcome. for attending and for your. Thank you all.